Hey everyone, and welcome back to tonight's episode of Apollo's Odyssey. I am ooh. <laughs> sorry about that. I am really excited about tonight's episode because you all are always asking me to uh, do live shows by myself, and I don't really do that very much. So I just want to like kind of take some time to get to know the audience tonight. Um, I want to do a live Q and A. Uh, I want to talk about some major updates that are going on in regards to this show and some plans I have for the future. I also want to talk about my new Shaman Spears collection. Yes, it is finally available. Uh, it is on the ticker at the bottom of the screen here. So make sure you go check that out. Um, before I get into all that, though, I also want to talk about some disclosure that is going on by the mainstream media in regards to ufos so pretty excited about that uh when i say mainstream media i puke in my mouth a little bit sometimes so if i do that during the show i'm sorry sorry about that i will try to not puke in my mouth when i mention cn in i'll try not to <laughs> Uh, I also want to let you all know, I know I mentioned in previous episodes that my donations in my chat were not working, but it's actually working now. Uh, it, it, I just was taking a while for YouTube to deposit it. So actually, feel free to go ahead and donate in my chat. Um, I have to remember to look at the camera over here. I'm doing something new tonight with my setup, so... George A says, do you do a shot if you like in your mouth? <laughs> yeah. So tonight, I just want to, you know, have some fun with you guys. And I want to talk about some things that are going on. You know, I kind of consider myself an exopolitician. There we go. Can we hear you now? Can you hear me now? Yeah? Yeah? <laughs> Going to, to uh, make sure these settings are all set up properly. See, this is why I am getting my studio together, which I'm going to be talking about during this show. Okay, looks like we're good. Okay, cool. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah, my browser randomly decides to lose connection sometimes. So this is, you know, this is why uh, with the direction of my show. So I'm kind of planning on doing a scripted series coming up here. It may be on a different platform, not this platform, but I do have a lot of scripted things that I am getting together to put out there. And it's kind of the main reason why I have my new studio. Uh, you know, I know a lot of you are probably wondering what's going on with that whole situation. Uh, it's really cool. You know, I'm getting it together, but the issue is now there's just so much of an echo every time I go in there that people are saying that, you know, it's annoying. So I have to figure out how to dampen the sound. I don't really know a whole lot about how all that works, but, you know, working on getting it together, I, I guess that means I have to buy a bunch of soundproofing panels so feel free to throw donations in the comments if you want to see me at that studio uh but yeah i got some equipment on the way really getting it together but the main reason for that is this series that i'm going to be doing so normally i go around giving a presentation at ufo conferences 
on solutions for humanity. And I kind of go every, over everything from full disclosure to eradicating the globalist cabal to, you know, pretty much anything you can think of, free energy technology. Maybe I can't mention that on this show. <laughs> Lots of very interesting things in that presentation. So I'm thinking I, I will be doing an episode on each topic that I normally do in my presentation. And it's going to be really awesome. Um, so my new Shaman Spears collection. I've been working on this for a really long time now. And I mean, it's been about a couple months. And the last time I posted a collection, which was a Pantheon collection... I believe I posted that like in mid-February, the end of February. Uh, basically what happened with that was I sold out right away. And I really appreciate that, you guys. So if you want to get the new collection before it's all sold out, get them while they're hot and get them right now at www.shamanspears.com. Uh, this collection is called the Odyssey Collection because... I painted all the stuff silver. I wanted to make it kind of spacey themed. And this collection, all the proceeds from it are going to fund my show. So that's what's so exciting about this particular collection. Um, I autograph all my spears. And for those of you who are new here and don't really know a whole lot about my spears, uh, just a little brief overview. They all have copper coils, crystals, magnets, and sand I collect from sacred places around the world down the insides because the bamboo is hollow. I actually get the bamboo myself from Topanga Canyon right here in Los Angeles, kind of between LA and Malibu. Hey, my sister's on here. What up, Hannah? <laughs> so yeah, that's like right between LA and Malibu, and I pick it all myself. I fill them all with copper coils, crystals, and magnets, and sand I collect from sacred places around the world. There's also naturally magnetic hematite sand in them, which hematite sand is really interesting because we actually, scientists have found that we actually have hematite in our brains. And that's kind of what causes us all to have the ability to be interconnected telepathically. So very interesting. Um, so basically, the main use for these is kind of... Um, basically interfacing with your own energy. And I like doing that. My favorite way of doing it is just taking them on hikes with me. Hannah's in the chat here. <laughs> My sister, she uh, she knows all about that. I took her on hikes all weekend <laughs> while she was visiting me here in California from where we're from originally in Illinois, where I'm from originally in Illinois. And we actually charged a couple of the spears. I believe... Um, this is the spear she charged. My sister charged on her hike. And then I have another one that's up here. It's a lime green one that I charged on my hike. Yeah, baby Yoda got his own spear. I gave him his own personal spear. You know, someone here commented and said that they wanted to see baby Yoda with the spear. So I made sure I got that for him. Zune is asking how much for the Tucker Carlson spear. You know, I have had that spear up for like two months. If you guys want to check it out, just uh, go to shamanspears.com. Go to the collections on the drop down menu uh, because that particular spear isn't up on the collections anymore. That's on the uh, Pantheon collection. So look on the Pantheon collection. And I actually dropped the price on it because no one had got it. Everyone was just waiting for my new ones, I guess. Oh, and also with the new ones, um, got a little off track here. So I was talking about how you use them. Oh, um, some other ways you can use them is if you want to help unblock and open up your chakras, you just spin them in a clockwise motion over each chakra. That's actually a technique I learned in a quantum touch energy healing class one time. And you can actually, in the class, they taught us to just do it with your finger. Like literally just going like this over each chakra helps unblock them and open them up. But if you do that with a shaman spear, oh my God, that's just going to be the same thing, but amplified times 10. Basically what these spears do is they amplify everything like enormously. <laughs> and anyone who's felt them, anyone who's picked them up knows what I'm talking about. So uh, what's interesting is I've, I also actually charged them all on an energetic collective so 
Uh, that's actually something I learned through my quantum touch modality energy healing uh, teaching classes. And basically, uh, it's kind of through the idea of quantum entanglement. But basically, what you can do is charge different things onto an energetic collective. So every spear I make, I charge onto the collective. Uh, every new spear that is added to the collective makes the whole collective stronger. And by now, I've been doing this for about five years now, maybe six years now. So I actually have probably made hundreds of spears by this point. At least a couple hundred, probably way more than that. And uh, a lot of very interesting people, a lot of very interesting healers have spears. And so every individual person who has a spear and charges their own spear is also charging the entire collective. So that's what's pretty crazy about it. And another new thing. Um, so, you know, in the past, I... I, I want to let people know for maybe people that bought my spears forever ago, I'm actually doing a new thing with my spears where I seal all the paint on them now. So I know that was a problem in the past without peeling off. Also, a new thing I started doing in my previous collection is I make these leather handles now. Oh, and by the way, all the faux and fur or all the fur and feathers are all faux. So no animals were harmed in the making of these. And uh, so I make these faux leather handles now. And what was happening before was people were kind of, you know, if you like held them before and it was just, you were just holding the fur, the fur got kind of weird. So now I'm doing these amazing like kind of faux leather handles and they're much easier for like holding while you're hiking and everything. And I actually take, you know, like I just said, me and my sister went hiking with them all last weekend and it was really amazing. <laughs> Everyone's, uh, talking to my sister in the chat here. That's funny. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so, it, you know, I actually hiked with them all weekend and my sister did as well. And there was actually no problem with uh, breaking them or any issues with them. You know, the way I used to make them, they would get kind of messed up after doing something like that. But the way I make them now, uh, they're so durable now. Uh, they're really just made for going on hikes with or taking to festivals and things like that. Um, if you don't do things like that, also, they just look really great on, like, your altar or, you know, hanging on hooks on your wall. A lot of people like to do that. So they're just definitely a nice little centerpiece. Um, so another amazing new thing I did with this collection. Sorry to talk so long about these here, but... Um, so I'm doing this new thing where I'm making my own organite and I'm loving it. And uh, this one's probably the most amazing one I made for my spears, but check this out. I actually made this myself. Uh, it's turquoise. I think there's mostly turquoise, maybe some quartz in this. And uh, so I actually made my own organite spearheads. This one is an organite spearhead I made. And some of them have organite that I made on the ends. Let me pull up another one here. Um, there's another organite spearhead I made. I'm having a lot more fun with making these now with this new process. It's really exciting. Uh, I have some organite pyramids on the ends of some of them. And I actually have a whole other new collection that I'm putting up. I didn't have time to put it up today. Um, but I'll either do that later tonight or tomorrow, and that will be the Shaman Spears Minis collection, which are like, actually, you know, in the collection that's up right now, I have these little tiny ones, which they're small to me because the original spe Shaman Spears I made were like around this size or bigger. But uh, I got these really little thin ones. Uh, I don't have any over here, right? Oh, this is one. This is an example. Baby Yoda's holding a sample of what I'm going to be calling the Shaman Spears Minis. And they're also part of the Odyssey collection. They all have are painted silver as well. Um, but what's interesting about these ones is they're just kind of like really thin and small. They're more like one size. Uh, I wasn't able to put crystals throughout the entire middle of them just because uh, the bamboo is so young at this point uh, of when these were collected that um, they weren't hollow in the middle yet. But they're going to be a nice, like, lower price item for anyone who wants that. Uh, yeah, Zune, I do use epoxy resin for the spearheads. Sorry I'm not looking at the questions yet, you guys. I want to 
do the Q and A at the end here, just kind of giving you guys updates with everything. Um, so yeah, you know, that's the whole collection and it's really exciting to have that up. And like I said, I mean, everything I sell with that is all going directly into funding these projects. Um, I actually have a lot of conferences coming up. I'm going to be at disclosure con. I'm doing some work with the observation deck, which I'll be talking about in a little bit here. Um, I'm going to be at a conference in Texas on the way home from Illinois. Uh, I'm actually hitting up the very end of it. I'm not speaking at it, but I'll be at God, Love, and Country. <laughs> you gotta say it like that, country. God, Love, and Country. That's where I'm gonna be on the 31st, and I'll be there for a few days. And that's actually more of a conservative type conference, not really anything to do with UFOs, but I figured, why not? I'll hit it up. So I'm going to be there. I'm also going to be at Camp Disclosure in August. So make sure you purchase your tickets for that. That's going to be in Georgia. I'm not sure where in Georgia. Just look up uh, campdisclosure.com. Uh, also, I'm going to be at East SETI. Not sure if I'll be just doing interviews or if I'll be speaking there yet. Um, still working that out with James Gilliland. We see what other events. And uh, I'm going to be at the United We Stand Fest. I'm going to be speaking at that 4th of July weekend in Cambria, California. If you don't know about the United We Stand Fest, uh, it's run by the Free and Equal Elections Foundation. And basically, it's kind of giving everyone a platform to debate and run on an equal platform. So, like, not just uh, Republicans versus Democrats, but basically, it would be so that every party could run on an equal platform. So it's a really amazing organization and a lot of cool people are speaking there. I'm kind of the exopolitician coming into it. So I'm representing the UFO community. Um, it's kind of more of a political thing or, you know, a thing about different communities. So I'm representing the UFO community there. So it's gonna be really interesting. Uh, I'm gonna be giving my Solutions for Humanity presentation, which uh, if you haven't seen it, a major part of it goes into uh, the importance of full disclosure. So I'm going to be talking about the importance of full disclosure at a political conference. So that's going to be pretty cool. I'm excited about it. Um, also, I'm going to be doing some stuff with Disclosure Fest this year. Uh, don't really have the details of when the official festival is going to be, but there's going to be a smaller event I'm doing with them here in LA on the 19th of June. So excited about that. Trying to think if I missed anything here. A lot is coming up in the coming months. Uh, Disclosure Con is in October, but I highly recommend going to that one. Uh, Doc Skinner runs that. Uh, Third Phase of Moon. I, I, I've been doing reports for Third Phase of Moon over the past year. They're going to be there. A lot of us who have been on the panel for Third Phase of Moon are all going to be there. So it's going to be a really good time. So definitely recommend joining in on that. So also I got some really cool live streaming equipment that just came in. So I'm going to be probably doing more live streams in different places. Let me know what you guys think about all that. But uh, yeah, I just did a live stream from the wisdom tree <laughs> on top of a mountain. And it kind of worked except that uh, there was a little bit of a uh, lag because I was literally on top of a mountain and the internet wasn't really working out properly up there. Um, so yeah, sorry, just kind of looking at these comments a little back and forth here. Okay, what else do I want to get into? Um, also, I'm kind of getting a fashion line together. I'll be getting into that a little later, uh, or I'll let you know more about that later. Yeah, Taylor, I actually just mentioned that I will be at ESETI in July, but I don't know if I'll be speaking at it yet or if I'm just doing interviews, still kind of waiting to see what James Gilliland has to say about that. Um, he said he would let me know pretty soon here, but I'll definitely be there either way. We'll definitely be there. 
Okay, so there's some really wild things happening in the world in regards to full disclosure. And as an exo politician, I feel it's important to kind of update you all on it. Um, you know, like I said, I will be going around speaking at political conferences about ufology this year. So pretty crazy. And I'm excited about that. I'm excited to see you there too, Taylor. Super excited. Uh, but yeah, so, you know, there's a lot coming out and a lot of people in the UFO community are really worried that this means that they're going to pull what they call the uh, bogus banner alien invasion. So, you know, I'm, I'm sure you guys have all heard about that. Project Blue Beam, you know, everything that's going on with that is, you know, I, I think a lot of you have been informed in that. And like I said, like a lot of people are really worried about what's happening in the UFO community in regards to that. And so literally over the past week here, we've had pretty much every mainstream media Ugh, sorry, when I say mainstream media, I just, I can't help but puke in my mouth a little bit. Sorry. <clears throat> Try that again. Every mainstream media news organization, they are all coming out with articles saying, hey, UFOs are real. So it looks like we've all been vindicated, but is that for a good reason? I hope so. A lot of people, like I said, a lot of us in the UFO community have been worried that uh, maybe it's a bogus banner, false alien invasion thing that they're going to use to scare the public more. Um, you know, I don't know what's going to happen, but I do know that so many people know about that plan. I mean, at least in our community, that if it if that did happen, most of us in our community would be like, really, really, come on. But it would freak out the normies. So who knows? But, you know, at the same time, I, I have some friends in the UFO community, like my friend Jermaine, he's saying he thinks that's bogus and that disclosure is very important and it's a good thing it's coming out. And I agree. I agree with him. It's great it's coming out. Um, you know, who knows what reason it's coming out, but it's an amazing thing that disclosure is finally on every major headline whether it's a distraction or not a lot of people are also saying like hey maybe it's a distraction from what's happening in arizona right now in regards to the previous election so you know who knows but either way it's great that disclosure is happening because that is what is needed and it's been needed for a long time yeah, Jermaine's popping off right now on his live, apparently. <laughs> He's been going on and on to me about that. So <laughs> I agree with him. I agree. I mean, there's it's amazing that disclosure is coming out. Even if it's being, maybe it's being used for a different reason. Like, who cares? At least it's coming out. Um, you know, it may be a bit of a distraction. And it's funny because even, like, I even see, like, normie type people posting, like, memes like, Oh, ha, aliens are next. So, you know, I don't think anyone would be surprised if a bogus banner alien invasion false attack thing actually happened because, I mean, it seems to me like even normies know about it at this point. So if they tried to pull that, it'd be pretty ridiculous. But honestly, it's like, even if like, you know, a UFO came and landed on the White House lawn at this point, I think most people in the world are very open-minded to it. I think, you know, maybe like 20 years ago, 30 years ago, people would have been freaking out. But I think at this point, it's more like, okay, most people, there's a, I think it's generally accepted that UFOs are real. Or aliens are real. I'm sorry, not UFOs, aliens, ETs, extraterrestrials, aliens, a bad word, <laughs> apparently. I've had a lot of people say that, that they don't like the word alien because alien means elsewhere. Um, but, you know, I think we're aliens. We're aliens, too, to the aliens out there. So it doesn't matter. But, you know, it's interesting. It's interesting what people get upset about these days. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, Taylor here says, their excuse of the mass hysteria is bull crap. We can handle it now. Yeah, we totally can. We totally can. And honestly, but, you know, I was going to say, I mean, I'm not really sure how I would react if I did see an alien in person. You know, it's like a lot of people are like, hey, you know, if I saw an alien, I'd be so excited. Hey, thanks to the L for the super sticker. You're awesome. $50. Wow. Let's see if we can top that. But uh, yeah, you know, if I saw an alien, I'm not sure how I'd react. And a lot of people were like, you know, if I saw an alien, I would just like go on his ship and take off and have some fun. But, you know, who knows? Like, what if you just like saw one and it was like such a crazy, like creepy thing that you just like had a heart attack and dropped dead? That would be unfortunate. <laughs> I don't know how I would react. I really don't know. If you guys have any thoughts on that, comment in the chat because this is something I actually legit think about all the time. Like, if I saw an alien, what would I do? You know, I guess it depends on what the alien actually looks like. I mean, you know, if it was like a big, slimy, or like, reptilian looking thing with red eyes um i might be kind of freaked out uh if it was something like this i'd be like hell yeah this guy's cute you know that would be amazing so <laughs> i don't know i mean no one knows how they're gonna react when it comes to this like you never know until you're in the moment but all I know is that me personally, at this point, with everything that's been going on in the world over the past year, I think if an alien came to me, I'm not sure how I would react at first, but after I get over it, whether it's very excited or kind of freaked out, I'd be like, hey, please take me with you. Please. I want to go with you. I would be begging this alien to take me uh with them so because like you know i've just been doing so much research over the past year on all this and from what i've heard earth is really far from the galactic center and like basically we're like this like you know biological uh or like a zoological or like a terrarium type thing it's it's not terrarium i'm trying to think of like the word for it. it's like a bio terrarium you know those places, botanical garden, that's what it is, botanical garden. Basically, from what I've heard, planet Earth is basically like a botanical garden or a zoological place. And from what I've heard, they just kind of like aliens, quote unquote, uh, just kind of drop off different random species here and like kind of come here to like check things out and have like experiments. But besides that, it's like we're so far from the galactic center like, all the planets that are, like, really where everything is happening are closer to the galactic center. And we're just kind of, like, you know, this prison planet that's just, like, floating around, like, way far away from, like, where everything is happening. And I like to be where things are happening. But I'm not, I'm not, you know, talking bad about planet Earth. Planet Earth is a cool place. And we need to be... We need to liberate ourselves and not make this excuse like, oh, we're stuck in a prison planet. We're totally screwed because that's not the case. You know, we can get over it. We can get off, get out of the prison planet mindset. And all it takes is all of us coming together and liberating ourselves. That's what it takes. And, you know, I feel like a lot of us in this community have been saying this for a long time. And it's like, how much longer do we have to keep saying this? And, you know, I mean, obviously everyone has to, needs to be the change they want to see in the world. And I, I feel like, you know, it, it starts with you. It really does. It starts with you and each individual person and the changes you make in yourself and how you do things in your own life. Yeah, Earth is beautiful. It is magnificent. But, you know, I would just really like to go out and explore some other planets and see what that's about. I would love to do that and then and then come back to Earth and like let people know what else is going on. 
<laughs> I think that would be really cool. I, I really would. And I think it's already happening. I mean, just go back and look at my interviews with Jim Goodall. Um, you know, like he always says, uh, what does he say? He always has, he has this quote. He always says, it was like, he had interviewed, you know, obviously he's done all this work, like interviewing, uh, you know, or like writing books about like Lockheed skunk works. And he knows all these really important people. And he, uh, had interviewed the CEO, I believe it was, or vice president of Lockheed Skunk Works, the previous one when they were on their deathbed. And they told him, Jim asked him, hey, um, so what exactly is out there? Like, what exactly have you guys made that is like, you know, the top secret, like high clearance stuff? And what he said, the like, I, I believe it was the vice president or the CEO of Lockheed Skunk Works. What he said was, um, you know what's on Star Trek? Uh, basically, think about Star Trek. We've already been there, done that, decided it wasn't worth it. What does that mean? I mean, that is crazy. It's like, okay, I want to know what he means by that. Does that mean that, you know, obviously we know, we know about the technology that's on Star Trek. We've seen Star Trek, Star Wars, and... If that technology isn't worth it, if they've already been there, done that, obviously they've already been doing the space bearing civilization thing and just like the general public doesn't know about it. And then on top of that, it's like, why would it not be worth it? To me, that means like maybe like what's the point of a machine if you can just like use some sort of like device or, you know, do something with your energy or something where you just kind of jump interdimensionally and just appear wherever you want, whenever you want. <laughs> so, uh, you know, there's a lot of really interesting stuff that's happening in the world. You know, I'm going to get to the comments a little later here. So, um, or I mean the questions, sorry, I'm kind of going back and forth looking at the questions here. Okay. So I want to get into these articles, what's happening in the world. First of all, I don't know if you guys have seen this. This is really crazy. So I was just sent by um, James Gilliland this crazy thing that was seen at East SETI. So I'm going to show you guys this right now. It's pretty wild. I don't know if you'll be able to hear it. All right, I don't know what you guys saw there, but that was really wild. And yeah, that was seen at East SETI. Uh, if you don't know about East SETI or James Gilliland, just uh, make sure you go and check out the episode I did with him recently. It was pretty fun. Um, and like I said, I will be at East SETI this year, so I'm really excited about it. But that was just seen at East SETI. So there's UFO sightings happening all over the world, like insane right now, just like Literally, like I said, every mainstream, bleh, sorry, man, I just, I really cannot say mainstream <clears throat> media without puking. Sorry. You know, but all those organizations, they have been talking about UFOs, every single one of them. So here, let me show you some, some more of these here. Okay, this one doesn't want to work here. Hold on a second. Okay, there we go. So this is the intelligent aerospace. Uh, what they say is how UFO sightings went from joke to national security. Worry in Washington. Are you guys seeing this? Sorry, I want to make sure. Okay. 
Uh, in the meantime, ex-government officials have been saying some remarkable things. So here's the standard photo that's everywhere. Why is this photo everywhere? That's what I don't get. It's like, okay. I mean, I guess because it's from a pilot that makes it more credible, but I don't really understand. I mean, And people are, are always saying, like, why are ufo photos always so blurry it's like okay i don't under like how do you how can you capture something on footage or with a camera that's going like i don't know probably like five thousand miles an hour like i it's probably just not really possible honestly um so in 2007 senate majority leader Harry Reid called his colleagues Ted Stevens and Daniel Inouye to a specially secured room in the Capitol where highly classified information was discussed. This used to be a career-ending kind of thing, said John Podesta, who generally kept his interest in UFOs to himself when he was President Bill Clinton's chief of staff. Sorry, those are people that are puke-worthy, too. Uh, you didn't want to get caught talking about it because you'd be accused of walking out of an X-Files episode. Like, that's a bad thing. On August 4, 2020, Deputy Secretary of Defense David L. Norquist approved the establishment of an Unidentified Aerial Phenomena, UAP, Task Force. And why... Cha okay, sorry, let me pull this back over here for a second. What I want to know is why do they think it's necessary to change UFO to UAP? Apparently, from what people are saying, uh, what it's like, okay, apparently they've been saying that they need to change it. The real reason why they change it is because UFO, they made it too conspiracy sounding and now like UFOs are associated with conspiracy theorists. So that's why they changed it to UAP. But it's literally the same thing. It's like unidentified flying object or unidentified aerial phenomena. Literally the same thing. I guess I guess the new term is a little different, but I just don't understand why they don't just call it a freaking spaceship. Like it's a freaking spaceship. Call it what it is. It's not unidentified. It's a spaceship. It's a UFO. It's flying in the sky. It's a flying saucer. It's a spaceship. You know? It's just it's what it is. What else? It's not anything else. It's, it's, it's a freaking spaceship. And they need to just start calling it that. I'm sorry. That's just how I feel. It's a freaking spaceship. That's what it is. Okay, getting back to this. Uh, oh, hold on. Sorry. Gotta share the stream here. Okay. So, um, on August 4th, 2020, deputy... Okay, so blah, blah, blah. Unidentified task force... Okay, the Unidentified Aerial Phenomena Task Force. The Department of the Navy, under the cognizance of the Office of... The Undersecretary of Defense for Intelligence and Security will lead the UAPTF. The Department of Defense established the UAPTF to improve its understanding of and gain insight into the nature and origins of UAPs. The mission of the task force is to detect, analyze, and catalog UAPs that could potentially pose a threat to U.S national security Ooh, what does that sound like bogus banner invasion as dod has previously stated the safety of our personnel and the security of our operations are of paramount concern the department of defense and the military departments take any incursions by unauthorized aircraft into our training ranges or designated airspace very seriously and examine each report. This includes examinations of incursions that are initially reported as UAP 
unidentified aerial phenomena when the observer cannot immediately identify what he or she is observing. And like I said, it's a freaking spaceship. Just get over it, people. Seriously, come on. It's 2021. It's a freaking spaceship. As part of former President Donald Trump's spending and COVID relief package, the Senate Intelligence Committee included a provision for the Director of National Intelligence to produce an unclassified report on what the government knows about UFOs. That report is due next month. Really wild, you know, and obviously a lot has been already coming out on this and a lot has been coming out over the past few months. Um, most of the files that have been released so far have been redacted, you know, like blacked out. So it's like, okay, well, why release them? But then black everything out. It's like, what's the point? But I'm curious to know what is going to be in the final batch of what they release. That should be interesting. Uh, hopefully they're saving the best for last and it's not just some goofy stuff. But, you know, it's it's really wild what's happening over the past year. And, of course, it was Donald Trump who put that, who released that right before the end of his presidency. I mean, that's, that's just the coolest thing ever. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to the haters out there, Trump haters, but I think it's great. I think, I think Trump can be kind of called the disclosure president. But, you know, Biden will probably take uh, credit for that because he's president now. But it was Trump who initiated it. And we got to remember that. Okay. All right. So what do we have next here? Oh, the next one we have here is CN Ugh. CNN. Sorry. Oh, my God. I'm seriously going to puke. It's CNN. You know, what's funny is CNN is actually right across from my new studio <laughs> so what do you have here oh god what's happening here um okay i'm sorry i don't know what's happening here this is really crazy okay i don't know what the title of that was so i'm just gonna go down here because i don't know what's happening okay washington for years the u.s government largely ignored reports of mysterious flying objects <laughs> unidentified seen moving through restricted military airspace, but is now slowly beginning to acknowledge that UFOs, which the Pentagon refers to as unidentified aerial phenomena, are real. While it is certainly premature to speculate as to whether these flying objects come from another world, the U.S. military has recently confirmed the authenticity of several videos and images showing encounters with unidentified flying objects. Feeling questions about what the Pentagon knows about such incidents and others like them. Next month, the Office of the Director of National Intelligence and other agencies are scheduled to deliver unclassified reports on UFOs to Congress. The Department of Defense's watchdog is also set to examine how the Pentagon has handled reports of UFOs. That's interesting. And whatever, I'm not going to get into the rest of this. You know, what's interesting about that is they said that they're going to discuss how they have handled the reporting of UFOs over the past years. I think that's really cool because what does that mean? That means that, you know, some people out there are thinking that there's been a problem with the way that the government has been handling reporting on UFOs, spaceships. So, you know, that's that's really fascinating. It's like, okay, um, I'm wondering what's going to be discussed here. I mean, are they going to discuss, you know, how wrong it was to keep things classified that should not have been secret for so long. And I mean, why the secrecy in the first place? That's what I want to know. I mean, all the ancient civilizations all over the world all have carvings in, in their caves and, you know, in hieroglyphs and everywhere. Aliens. It's literally everywhere. I'm sorry. Spaceships and ETs. Spaceships and ETs, spaceships from outer space, they are 
I saw them in the Temple of Hathor. Hold on. Let me pull this up, actually. I want to look at this right now. But uh, in the... T oh, no. I'm sorry. Abydos. At the Temple of Abydos in Egypt, there is... Hold on. There is literally a glyph on the ceiling. Let me share this here. So this is on the ceiling of the Temple of Abydos in Egypt. And so this is the oldest temple in Egypt. It's known to be the oldest. Most people, most people agree that it is the oldest. It's actually so old that it used to be next to the Nile, right on the water, and it's like nowhere near it now. That's how old it is. Way older than the pyramids. And look what's here. What is that? It's a freaking spaceship. What about that? Yeah, that's a spaceship too. And that's a helicopter. I mean, you don't need a propeller to be in outer space. So that's a helicopter. That's a spaceship. I don't know. That kind of looks like a yacht to me. I'm not really sure. But that's that's a freaking spaceship. It's nothing else. It's not an unidentified aerial phenomena. And it's not a UFO. It's a spaceship. And that was carved in the Temple of Abydos a long, long, long time ago. And that's a helicopter. So, you know... This is just really interesting. Yeah, it's definitely a spaceship. It's a spaceship. I mean, what else would that be? <laughs> so, um, you know, we have... Ancient civilizations knew about this. So I want to know, at what point did it all of a sudden become secret? Like, when did people start, like, forgetting that, like, UFOs were real? When did they start... I mean... How long ago did they start calling people that talked about aliens and spaceships conspiracy theorists? I mean, I don't think they were called conspiracy theorists at first. And obviously, ancient civilizations either knew of them or literally knew them and worked with them. Or, I don't know, came here, like, mated with them and had, like, their babies, future babies and grandchildren with them. Who knows? I mean, we probably are aliens. We're probably descendants of ancient aliens. So at what point did it become a secret? And like, you know, everyone's always like, oh, disclosure is so important. It's so great we're having disclosure. But what I want to, what always I feel like saying is like, hey, like, why the secrecy in the first place? Why was it ever necessary? I want to know. I mean, obviously, these ancient civilizations, they knew there was aliens out there. They had spaceships flying around. So, why the secrecy? I just don't understand. You know, I think it had to do with a certain religion taking control of the world at a certain time in history. And I'm not going to name names. But this certain religion got very dogmatic and out of control and you know and just the sector of this religion i wouldn't say everyone that was a part of this religion but just a certain sector of this religion got really out of control and kind of like you know burned a lot of the books that had a lot of the knowledge about these things and you know threatened people and killed people and started burning them on stakes and crazy things like that and after a while it's like after people were threatened for so long and then most of those people died out and then the people that were remaining you know or came later you know obviously at a certain time it, it was like people didn't know about it anymore and then there was all this stigma about it and people were scared to talk about it and then you know for like thousands like a thousand years or maybe less than that people Kind of aren't talking about it anymore. And then all of a sudden, you know, there's this Roswell crash that happens and people start talking about it again. They're like, you know, 
there's UFOs. And then people start getting labeled conspiracy theorists because they're like, oh, it was a weather balloon. You're stupid. Don't talk about that. Um, which, I mean, weather balloons don't look like that. But anyway, you know, so now they're really coming out with the information and it's like, They've been keeping it a secret for so long. It's like embarrassing. It really is. It's like everyone knows about this. Now. Mostly everyone. And people that don't are really, they just watch CNN. <clears throat> Sorry. Oh, my God. I can't even say that word without puking. But, you know, they watch that. And... I guess they just really believe everything they say. But now they're talking about unidentified aerial phenomena. So I guess everyone's going to be talking about it now. So this is interesting. So hopefully it's not being used <laughs> for the wrong reason. And, you know, who knows what's going to happen. Um, but, you know, there's still a lot more that's coming out here. Let me see. What else do I have here? Okay, this is USA Today. Sightings all over the world. Another former federal official discusses UFOs' upcoming congressional report. So this came out on May 17th. A lot of these articles came out last week. And, you know, hold on, let me just go back here for a second. You know, that's what's interesting. When you notice that all these... I'm sorry, I'll say it differently so I don't puke, but all these organizations, when they all come out saying the same headline at the same time, you know that there's probably some sort of weird agenda there. And they all came out about UFOs all last week. So really fascinating. Wonder what that's about. Okay. So another formal federal official is acknowledging the possible existence of UFOs just a couple of weeks before a government sanctioned report on unidentified aerial phenomena is expected to be sent to Congress. Luis Elizondo, former director of the Defense Department's Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program, told 60 Minutes that some reported signs don't have explanations. We're going through our due diligence. Is it some sort of a new type of cruise missile technology that China has developed? Is it some sort of high altitude balloon that's conducting reconnaissance? Ultimately, when you have exhausted all those what ifs and you're still left with the fact that this is our airspace and it's real, and that's when it becomes compelling and that's when it becomes problematic. And see, so. What they're doing in here is they're making it like, oh, this is just like things from other governments and we all need to be scared. Really annoying. Also speaking on the same Sunday night segment, former Navy pilot David Fravor discussed a 2004 incident off Southern California in which he said he and three other pilots spied an unexplained a large area of roiling white water surrounded by a calm sea. And we saw this little white tic tac looking object, and it's just kind of moving above the white water area. So at least he, he calls it a tic tac object. He's like, this thing looks like, it. but you know, that, that sounds like it's our government. That to me sounds like a black budget program, either our government or, you know, that's the other interesting thing here is, let me take this off for a second. That's the other interesting thing here. You know, just because our government isn't disclosing things, you know, that doesn't mean that, you know, maybe like some of these things that are happening, like some of this technology, like the Tic Tac technology, uh, or, you know, the tic-tac-shaped UFOs, the scar shaped ones, um, the flying saucer technology, inner gravity technology. Maybe our government doesn't necessarily have it, and it's actually black-budget corporations that have it. You know, that's something to think about, too. It's like, how can, if that is the case, then how can they disclose it when they don't technically own it? I mean, from what I've heard, 
a lot of our tax dollars go into actually go into these black budget programs and you know it's kind of like these like mad scientists that are doing their own thing and our government's like hey can you give us some of that and like literally they have to like kind of like threaten them to like get some of this information from them or some of this technology so i mean who knows that's another thing to think about as well is like you know <laughs> is it like obviously they have like area 51 like is but are there other facilities in the united states that are working with highly advanced technologies and they're like you know these crazy mad scientists or like you know elite people that have their own projects and you know major they're funded by major corporations yeah taylor here says didn't corporations try to hijack the black budget government funded programs yeah that that's what i've heard and i mean from from what i've heard they they own them like these major corporations like own them themselves and then you know, our government sometimes doesn't even really have anything to do with them. So, you know, that might be another reason for the secrecy. So I want to go back to this here. What else do we have here? The director of national intelligence and secretary of defense were asked, were tasked with creating the unclassified report for intelligence and armed services committees in Congress. Former National Intelligence Director John Ratcliffe told Fox News Maria Bartiromo Bar 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 on March 19th that the report would include information that cannot easily be explained. Ratcliffe said some UFO sightings have been declassified in the past, but the report will present more information to the American people. There have been sightings all over the world, he said, and when we talk about sightings, the other thing I will tell you, it's not just a pilot or just a satellite or some intelligence collection. Usually we have multiple sensors that are picking up these things. Okay, whoa, what's happening? Okay, sorry about that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Zoe Jane here says corporations hijack the whole government. Yeah, I agree with that. <laughs> That's definitely happening in the mad scientists. Yeah, Stephen. Uh, J so Stephen here says James, uh, you said he just caught a huge mothership on video cruising over the ranch. Yeah, if you haven't seen the beginning of the show, make sure you go back and check more at the beginning of my show I actually go over that so here's a there's another thing i want to show you guys um so there's this awesome platform which i'm now a part of uh here in la uh well it's it's run here in la but it's called the observation deck with C captain ron who was originally the host of truth be told radio but now he's doing a new project called the Observation Deck. It's really cool. And I'm kind of like the uh, media person for it. Or I guess I'm not really sure what my title is. I'm like something like the media relations. So basically, uh, it's like a, it's really like a biography or like a, like a bibliography for everyone in the UFO community. You can actually go and search any of the speakers, anyone who's in the UFO community, you can search them on this platform and, you know, find all the information out about them, find out what their upcoming events are, see what their products are. Um, what I'm doing for it is I'm basically reviewing um, new books that are coming out in ufology and new media, uh, you know, also like documentaries, things like that, that are coming out in ufology. So I kind of do a video and an article segment at least once a month on there about that. And what's also interesting is they got this like really wild virtual platform where um, you can actually go to virtual conferences and we're gonna be hosting them there a lot actually, but this co virtual conference space is really cool. And you know, I'm not really into doing like virtual conferences, but this is like beyond 
anything I've ever seen before. I mean, like, you can literally create your own avatar. You go in it. It's, like, this amazing world that's, like, you know, it's, like, on an island. It's, like, the coolest looking, like, conference hotel type place, like, you've ever seen. And you can actually, like, take boats out in the water and climb up to, like, a lighthouse. And there's, like, tons of crazy things going on. There's actually, like, a club where you can make your little avatar go in the club and be, like, dancing with different people. And they uh, have, like, an audience where you can, like, go on. Like, for me, I, I may at some point be going on stage and speaking, like, virtually. And it'll actually show my show here playing behind me. And, like, you know, me actually on my show, like, playing behind me and uh, whatever videos I want to pull up. And, you know, if you're, like, going to watch the show, you can actually go in and sit down in the audience and what's interesting is they make it so that there's like kind of like a line around your seats. So if you're like in a seat and then there's someone you know next to you in a seat, you can talk to each other without the whole like auditorium hearing you. And the speaker, when the speaker is talking, you know, there isn't sound like going over the speaker. So I think that's really interesting. It's actually really well done. Um, so that's through the observation deck. And let me show you that here. So this is the observation deck. Really freaking cool. I love what he's doing here. He's been working really hard on it. Um, so, you know, here's about the uh, interactive live experiences that are going to be coming up. Uh, go here to check out all the events. Like I said, you'll be able to find speakers, authors, researchers. Um, I definitely recommend going to check this out. This is uh, what the uh, world looks like. Uh, well, so this is if you go in the conference, this is what it looks like. I mean, it really looks like a really dope, like amazing conference, but you can just go to it from home. Uh, so it is like way cheaper. It's like if you can't afford to spend like thousands of dollars, like going out of town, getting a hotel, you know, conferences are expensive. So this is like way cheaper to just go in one of these, honestly. And here's me. So I'm like the media relations person. Here's the whole team. And here's when the uh, next festival is. So make sure you check this out. It's really cool. Um, I'm going to show you. Oh, there's where you can check out my book reviews. I'm going to show you how you can find. I guess uh, I think you need a membership to actually be able to see everyone that's a part of the community on here. But yeah, definitely check that site out. That's a really cool project that I'm a part of right now. Um, let me see here. Yeah, it's it's really sick. I mean, it is like I I never would have guessed they would be able to make a virtual conference like that. It's unfortunate, it, like it's kind of coming out at like the uh, possibly the end of this whole crisis in the world. But it's amazing because, like I said, it's like it's freaking expensive to go to these conferences sometimes. So it's a nice alternative. So what else do I have to share with you guys here? Uh, oh, so this is crazy. Tomorrow morning, there's going to be... Tomorrow morning, there's going to be a super flower... Jesus, why does it keep doing this? Stupid ads. There's going to be a super flower... Sorry, I don't know what's going on. Blue Blood Moon? Super Flower Blood Moon. So, if you're excited to try and catch a glimpse of the Super Flower Blood Moon, the only total lunar eclipse in 2021, when it occurs Wednesday, May 26th, you're in for a treat, according to NASA. The total lunar eclipse will begin at 4.47 a.m., Eastern time and end at 9.50 a.m. with peak totality. 
the blue the blood moon stage according occurring at 7:16 a.m. if it is daytime in your viewing location you will have to watch webcasts of the eclipse to see it best I'm not sure if I'll be able to see it out here in LA. Um, yeah, so it sounds like it's like 4 a.m. Eastern time. Here in LA, I am, is earlier for me. So I think that means that it will be like 2, 1 a.m. my time. So I might actually be able to see it. That's pretty cool. There's an interesting uh, visualization map. Oh, yeah, it looks like here it shows all the times. But, you know, it's really interesting when people can get awesome photos of it. I love when, like, my... I have a lot of photographer friends because I did modeling for years and um, still kind of do sometimes. But it's really interesting because uh, a lot of my photographer friends will get really cool time-lapse photography things. So, um, there's that. So, um, before I get into, you know, I said I was going to do a Q&A on here and let you guys ask whatever. Um, go ahead and start asking any questions. I know there's a lot you guys asked that I didn't go back and look at yet, so I'll make sure I do that. Um, but before I get into the Q&A part... One last thing I want to show you all. Uh, Shaman Spears. Here's the actual site. I forgot to show you guys this earlier. But if you haven't seen it yet, here's my Shaman Spears site. And I don't just have my Spears up there now. I have other awesome stuff too. But uh, here's the Odyssey collection. Uh, the stabs actually range from $100 to... 400 make sure you click view all because there's a lot of wild looking ones in here i want to show you the uh larger ones i have here so most of these are kind of like mid or smaller sized ones but I actually so these ones are actually like staff size this one is like you can have this as like a staff like you, like a walking stick, basically. And these ones are pretty big, too. These these three are behind me right now. Uh, so you can see these three in the video right now behind me. Um, let me see here. And like I said, I also have a smaller collection, which will be like these really tiny little spears. Uh, I haven't been able to post those yet. We'll do that a little later tonight or tomorrow. But those will be a lower price item. I'm probably going to be selling those for $77 each. And these are the uh, Organite key necklaces. They have Moldavite in them and crushed fluorite. And I like to call them initiation keys. A lot of people are confused. They're like, oh my god, are those $4,444? And I'm like, no, they're actually $44.44. .44. I might need to go back and just get take the uh, <laughs> 44 cent part off because people get freaked out. <laughs> I also have these amazing brass knuckles, two of them left, that are organite. They're actually organite brass knuckles. And these organite dagger necklaces. Like I said, all purchases of my art help fun. The future of this show because i have some awesome things planned i just need to get richer to do the amazing things that i want to do <laughs> so help me out i have a few more uh oh i have a few more of these pyramids left i'm gonna make some more pretty soon here too and there's some pictures of my friends having fun with spears <laughs> so i really enjoy uh Making me, every time I go on a hike with people, I always have to bring them, uh, bring spears with me. I mean, I always go hiking with spears. It's just, it's just what I do, and I can't go hiking without them. Like literally, even if I travel out of town, I take smaller ones with me. I usually hike with more like mid-sized ones. Like, I don't know, this is a little small. I usually have them about around this size. Um, yeah, and. 
actually every time I go hiking with friends, like I usually have a bunch of spears in the back of my alien jeep, and I just make everyone carry a spear. And like literally, if you go hiking with me, you are not allowed to go hiking without a spear. That's just the way it works. <laughs> so it's pretty funny. Pretty funny. Okay, so we're gonna get into the uh, question part. Oh, Taylor says, how much are the daggers? The dagger necklaces are, um, I believe those were around $77, $77.77. Yeah, squids, oh, squids one, definitely get you a spear. Okay, I'm just, uh, oh, my mom is on here, and she says, do you have a favorite on your new collection? Man, that's so hard, because they're all completely unique and individual, and I never make any two the same. Um, actually, this one right here. This is a chakra one. So there's actually uh, crystals that kind of balance each chakra here in this organite. I did not make this organite tip myself. I don't know how to do the, uh, well, I just, I haven't made my own layered chakra ones yet, but I made this organite end right here. I believe it's a uh, red jasper. But yeah, so this is a really awesome chakra balancing one. And this one here, this one's like, this one's a little bit of a higher price one. I think it's only like $333. But uh, yeah, this is a pretty long one. And I just like the coloring on this one. I actually, you know, like I said, this is the first time I did a, uh, a silver staff collection. And I really dig it because they look like spaceships. <laughs> They're like spear spaceships. Okay, um, but this one, the uh, organite spear, uh, what's it? The organite spear I put on the end of this one's really wild. I actually made that myself. Squid says, I like the darker colored ones. Rick Mackey here says, I think all the UFO news lately on MSM is distractions from the audits and the final deep state move is need if needed. Yeah, I was talking about that at the beginning of the show. A lot of people think that, and, you know, it's unfortunate. It's like, why are you something so amazing like this to, uh, to distract people? I mean, really, there's just so much crazy things going on in the world. It's like, it's all just kind of a distraction, really. <laughs> I'm looking through the old comments now. Let me know if you guys have any questions. Um, Rocky says, would love to see a silver spear with black, blue, or green where the purple is on that one. I have a lot here, so... Let me see. Yeah, just go and look at my site, Rocky, because, I mean, I have some that are all different colors. So, uh, definitely go check those out. Um, but, you know, so like I was saying at the beginning of the show, I have a lot of really awesome projects ahead. And I know I've been saying this for a while. I've really had to do a lot in regards to getting equipment together and kind of getting everything going with this show. It's taken a lot of work and a lot of time and a lot of money, but I think I'm almost there. And I'm really excited to, to start scripting out my own series. That's going to be really cool. Like I said, it might not be for this platform. It might be for a really major platform that involves some amazing people that I think you all know pretty well, and I won't name drop right now. 
but that's going to be exciting. So definitely make sure you guys, uh, if you want to help me fund getting me started with all that, please check out my spears. Uh, Renee here says, have I ever been to a concert at the Hollywood Bowl? <laughs> um, no, actually I haven't. And it's funny because I've lived near it for so long. I mean, I literally lived like right over it for like five years, but um, I've never, you know, I, I just, I don't really like being in crowds very much. I only really like going somewhere if I have like a box uh, area. Like I actually went to a Tool concert right before everything shut down or a little before everything shut down uh, in 2019, I think it was. And I, like literally my friends, they got this huge, like, I guess it's called like a box box seat or something but it was like literally like a huge box and it was just like a group of us in our own thing and man that was so fun freaking tool is amazing it was it was great uh, <laughs> zoe jane says what brings you the most joy in life you know i think creating my own things and people loving my creations. That's definitely what brings me the most joy. And I'm not just saying that because I'm talking about my spears and everything I'm doing, but you know, it, I just, it really does. It's like, if you put all this time and energy into making something and then you put it out there and people love it, dude, that's just like, it's like the best feeling ever. It's like, wow. Okay. Really made a difference here. <laughs> it's a great feeling. Um, also, I don't know. Also going on hikes, going on hikes brings me joy. Definitely. I j just did that all weekend with my sister. My little sister came in town from the Midwest and I took her to the wisdom tree, which is by the Hollywood sign. And then we ended up hiking to the Hollywood sign right after. And then we did this crazy hike in Malibu the next day. So really you know, I'm trying, I'm thinking about this right now. Zoe mentioned rocks and I'm thinking, okay, my spears have rocks. Also playing guitar, doing shows. I haven't been able to do that in a long time, but I was since, you know, the pandemic, the stuff started, but I was a guitarist in a band that was doing very well at that point. And we were performing a lot at like places like the hard rock and awesome places like that. And I really enjoyed that. I don't know if that's going to happen again um or like anytime soon anyway so who knows what's gonna happen with that but that's really fun too i really enjoyed doing that when i was doing that also really enjoyed acting did a lot with that but the industry has been really weird lately unfortunately the entertainment industry so that's why i'm doing this show it's like i can perform on here in front of all you guys and i can talk about whatever i want to talk about except i have to be kind of careful <laughs> can't talk about everything i want to talk about i can't really necessarily do everything I want to do on here. But, you know, there's a lot of things I do want to do on here that I'm really excited about. I'm going to start bringing you guys on adventures with me. I got some equipment to, like, kind of film my adventures and wild experiences I have. And, you know, I, I did actually film a lot uh, leading up to the election, which I never released because so much crazy things happen in the world. But... I'm going to be making a full documentary of all the footage I got with that. So hang tight for that too. I think uh, I'm, I'm going to start doing that as a side project while I'm getting this series together. I just, I probably won't release it on this platform just because I don't want to get taken down because it's, you know, it's pretty wild. Um, but yeah, I'll probably release that somewhere else. So I'm excited for all that. But <laughs> so I'm just thinking, uh, playing guitar, selling my spears and hiking, climbing on mountains. So literally everything that brings me joy in life has to do with rocks, rock climbing, rocks on sticks, rocking out. I just love rocks, I guess. <laughs> so this is yay adventures, Laura Croft style, you know, Laura Croft, that is like the epitome of me and everything I want to be. Like, I just, I always loved that growing up. I just, I idolized the first uh, Tomb Raider. I just really freaking loved it. 
And, you know, I started, like, thinking about later. I always kind of, like, before I used to have my style a lot like hers. Like, I would do, like, the braids and stuff on adventures. Like, I kind of have more of a reporter style right now. But, um, you know, it was interesting because, like, I went back and watched that movie a while back. And I was like, dude, she's, like, literally, like, basically fighting the Illuminati in this, like, movie. Like, that's so crazy. And it was just, like... I don't know. I just love going on wild adventures to like third world countries like Egypt and Machu Picchu. And uh, I'm literally to me, like all my number one destinations in the world are tombs. And yeah, that's what I'm all about. <laughs> so I'm like real life Tomb Raider. That's the epitome of everything I want to be. <laughs> love it. Squids owes his love first Tomb Raider to playing it, not dressing up in tight shorts. <laughs> no, exactly what you meant by that. But yeah, the first Tomb Raider was great. The newer ones, uh, the second one was okay. I don't think the actress in the new one did a very good job. I'm not going to lie. She was okay. I didn't think she was the best. Really don't think so. Hmm. Oh, Zune said, have you... Okay, I'm going back to, like, older comments. Zune said, have you visited Stonehenge? I have not, and I want to really bad. I've actually never been to Europe before. Believe it or not, I, I went to Egypt, and I went to Mexico, and I went to Peru, and those are the only countries I've been to. I only go to third world countries. That's my thing. I like to go to the sacred sites. In the comments here. Someone said our true history is yet to be discovered. I agree with that 100%. And it's fascinating. It really is. It's like people like, you know, it's like always at, at every point in time. It's like these people, they feel like they know everything. And then... There just ends up being so much more that we don't know. And I think it's, to me, it's like the way I like to go about it is I believe everything is real until it's proven not to be. So in my opinion, dragons are real, fairies are real, aliens are real. I mean, I know aliens are real. You know, it's all, it's all true until proven not to be. In my opinion, that's how I like to think of things. Because it's like people like these structure their belief systems over things. And then, you know, belief systems are a dangerous thing. It's like, you know, that's kind of what causes wars and all the problems in the world. It's all caused over belief systems because people, you know, they kind of like wrap their mind around something and they get used to this idea. And if something comes in and shatters that reality, it causes problems with people. And so I, I really, I actually wrote an entire book on it one time. Actually, my friend Brian Galloway wrote a book on beliefs. I forget what the book is called, but just look up Brian Galloway and book about beliefs. And it's literally like a book like this big. And the whole thing is just talking about how destructive and also important beliefs are. I guess believing everything is real is also believing. So... <laughs> You know, beliefs are just a crazy thing, and I think people should definitely be careful of them. Joshua says, do you like the band Echo and the Bunny Men? I have no idea what that is. I'm sorry. I don't. Don't know. Okay, well, you know, I think uh, I'm going to get ready to get off here, so... Like I said, again, go check out the Odyssey collection, which is now available on shalmaspears.com. And I hope to see you all next time. Like I said, oh, also Thursday. I will not be having a show Thursday because I will be flying out of town. Uh, but catch me on the 1st. I'll still be out of town on the 1st, but I won't be on a plane that day. So I'm going to be going live from 
Texas on the, I, I think it's the first. Yeah, the first. So that should be fun. And hmm. Yeah, so no show Thursday, but on the first, I'll have a show. I might randomly go live sometime before then, maybe at the conference or something. So we'll see. But, you know, I'm really excited about things in the future, and I had fun talking on here with you guys today. So until next time on Apollo's Odyssey, and remember, it's a freaking spaceship. It's not unidentified aerial phenomena. It's not an unidentified flying object. It's a freaking spaceship. All right, people? So until next time on Apollo's Odyssey, over and out.